Here we are with the one bone found in the arm, which is in between your elbow and your shoulder. This is the humerus. Ha 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 ha, humerus. You know, and it sounds like that. And so, of course, as we always start off, we are going to be asking laterality. What side of the body would this particular bone be found on? Because, of course, we have two of them. Well, let's use our markings to help determine that. As we take a look, you'll notice one side being a very, very ball shaped structure. That is called the head. And you can imagine that this head is always proximal. And so that also helps us to understand because it also faces medially. So you can imagine on the lateral side, it's not so much of a ball, but this big chunk of bone. And this big chunk of bone is called the greater tubercle, like this big bump. And then you have the lesser tubercle here. But this head faces both proximal and medial. So now if you put your head here and your feet way down there, well, of course, it would be like this or like this. Well, let's take a look at then what's anterior because that would determine if it's a right or a left. Well, one of the nice things is this guy right here. This lesser tubercle, you already got introduced to the greater tubercle, is always on the anterior side. So if you see this, you know that this is going to be a right humerus. The other way you could tell is if you go distally and you could find kind of a couple divots or whole, uh, kind of things that look like pits. We call those fossas, shallow depression or grooves. One, two of them here, you can see one called the radial uh, fossa and the other one called the coronoid fossa. On the posterior side, we get this big, gigantic, huge one called the olecranon fossa. That's always on the posterior side. I always remember it because it's the elbow. The elbow goes back in and elbows are on the posterior side. So, of course, I have to flip it this way and then now it's my right humerus. Let's begin to take a look at all the rest of the markings here. So we got the head with what we call the anatomical neck. You know, anatomical, anatomists always say anything that binds the head to the rest of the bone is considered the neck. So if I were to draw a line here, you can see I could break off the nice smooth little head and that would be the neck, the anatomical neck. But over and over people grab a hold of the bone and they're like, Oh no, there's a neck. If I need to choke this out, this would be the neck. Well, that's not the anatomical neck, you know, technically speaking, because it doesn't connect the head. So this would be considered the surgical neck. And people constantly use that, and finally it took, and voila, surgical neck it is. So this is the surgical neck of the head, or of the humerus. This, if I were to grab it, trying to choke this one off, this would be the anatomical neck. So we have the head anatomical neck, we already got introduced to the lesser tubercle, which is the bump on the anterior side, the greater tu tubercle on the lateral side, and then of course the surgical neck, if I were to grab this. Now if I were to look through here, do you see this big notch here straight down? This is a kind of a groove. As you notice, you're not going to really see it on any other side because it's in between the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle. This is called the intertubercular groove. So this is the intertubercular groove, you'll find that uh, latissimus dorsi comes up and races into there. All right, what else do we have? Well, on the lateral side, of course, on the opposite side of the head, is this very roughened area. This roughened area is called the deltoid tuberosity. I'm pretty sure you could guess what muscle goes there. All right, continuing down, you can see the distal end has a few things. Sure, we should call this the lateral condyle and the medial condyle, but people like to make up things besides just those kind of, not necessarily boring names, but they're like, ooh, look, this looks like a person's head. And this other one's like, ah, yes, and this one, this one looks like a spool, like somebody has a spool of thread. And so they named them, rather than the lateral and medial condyles, they named them the capitulum, which is just like decapitating somebody, so somebody's Capitulum is on the lateral side. That's this ball-like structure that articulates with the radius. And then this medial one that looks like a spool, and the spool term is called trochlea. So this is the trochlea, and this is the capitulum. On each lateral side, of course, then you get the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. If these were condyles, above the condyles are epicondyles. This is lateral epicondyle. This is medial epicondyles. Above the trochlea, as I had mentioned before, there's this little divot that's called the coronoid fossa. On this other side, there's a little small divot above here that is the radial fossa because the radius will go there. And then as we take a look at the posterior side again, here's the olecranon fossa. Review, head, anatomical neck with the greater tubercle, lesser tubercle with the intertubercular groove racing between. Then we got the surgical neck with the deltoid tuberosity on the lateral side with the distal end having the capitulum, just this ball, trochlea here, and then the lateral and medial epicondyle, 
with the epicondylar ridge, those fancy words. And then this is the coronoid fossa, and this is the radio fossa, and behind is this big, large, electronon fossa.